Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It is part of the namesake of the Metroidvania genre, which has become an inspiration for not only future Castlevania games, but also many other games as well. As a lifelong Castlevania fan, Symphony of the Night was one of the Castlevania games that I just never happened to play. I played Castlevania 1 through 4, Bloodlines, Lament of Innocence, Curse of Darkness, Dracula X, Rondo of Blood, most of the DS versions and Game Boy Advance versions of Castlevania, and even Lords of Shadows 1, but definitely not 2. I've played most of these titles many times over, but shockingly, Symphony of the Night was a game that I just never played. There are many reasons for that, which we'll get to in this video. We will also take a look into Castlevania's Symphony of the Night with a modern eye. We will see how it holds up by today's standards and give you my take on playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the first time in the year 2020. So the initial question that you probably have, why have you not played Symphony of the Night? Well. Symphony of the Night was released on PS1, and upon its release, many people viewed the game as ancient. It was a 2D side-scroller. <laughs> yeah, right, we're not playing that now. <laughs> yeah, that didn't hold up real well. You can actually check out this quote here from a magazine that talks about Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and we can read it as follows. Nintendo vs. Sony. If you ever needed proof that N64's Miles ahead of the 32-bit competition, just compare these shots to the new PlayStation version of Castlevania. Whereas the N64 version features fully 3D characters and backgrounds, along with dazzling light effects, the PlayStation title is a flat 2D platform game where the tiny hero has to fight big, cheesy monsters. No comparison, really. Hmm, that didn't age very well, did it? Growing up, my friends and I would coordinate which games we purchased and we would frequently trade amongst each other. And none of my friends happened to own Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It was not very popular. In fact, it only sold 60,000 copies in all of North America during this time. So that's why I was late to the party. So let's take a look at Symphony of the Night and give you my experience on playing the game in 2020. As soon as I started the game up, I knew it was right up my alley. Retro style graphics, a horror setting with many classic monster tropes, Metroidvania gameplay style, and best of all, it was a new Castlevania game, at least to me. Let's start off with the visuals. I really enjoy the look of the game and it holds up quite well. It reminds me much more of a game you would find on the Super Nintendo rather than the PlayStation, but that's actually a good thing. I feel like the polygon figures and animations that were used in most PS1 games didn't age very well. You play them now and they look kind of like trash. The visual representation and graphics of Symphony of the Night have definitely stood the test of time. One of my favorite animations from the game is the blood spatter when you kill these green armored goons right here. <laughs> Man, that was some violent stuff for 97. Each section of Dracula's castle has its own unique feel, enemies, and designs. This makes every area seem interesting and visually appealing in its own way. It also kept me fully engaged and curiosities forever rose the more I explored. I wanted to see what each area looked like and was never disappointed. The sounds in the game are nothing short of extraordinary. The music is absolutely top notch. Each area has a different theme that really helps deliver a unique tone and feeling for each section of Dracula's castle. I often would listen to the Symphony of the Night OST 
I've bobbed my head to many of these songs, but actually playing the game and associating the music with different sections of Dracula's castle, the different enemies, the different feelings in each section really brings the music to life and it really helps create the themes of the game that are so enjoyable as you move from area to area. So as far as the gameplay goes, the journey of navigating Dracula's castle at first seemed rather easy. I followed this formula before. Follow the map, destroy enemies, look for secrets. We got this. I got lost a few times and spent an hour or two wandering around, but that small struggle just helps you appreciate it when you finally find the small secret that you were looking for. The game really seemed to flow with great pacing. That is until I got to Richter. I defeated Richter at the same spot that I had fought Dracula at the beginning of the game. I thought to myself, this is it, I just earned all of these power-ups, I can turn into a bat, I can mist, my weapons are all upgrading, it feels like I just acquired these powers, and now the game's done, I barely even got to use them. Honestly I was a bit bewildered that this could be the amazing game that was so highly revered by everyone in the gaming and Castlevania community. So I searched online, and I find out that I was missing a whole lot. In fact, 50% of the game was complete. I still had half the game to complete, and this was just crazy to me. I wondered how many people back in 97 beat the game, defeated Richter, and they thought that, well, that's it, and they never got to experience the second half of the game. So what did I do? I cheated. I went to the interwebs, and the interwebs told me to grab a gold and silver ring and go to the bottom of the clock area, which I did, but I didn't read further in the walkthrough. I wanted to do it on my own, but I needed a little bit of a boost to propel me forward in the game. Down in this area, I met with Maria and she gave me the holy goggles and I slayed the weird little green orb over top of Richter's head. I thought, yes, now I can fight Dracula, but no. This was actually due to a guy named Shaft, not to be confused with Richard Roundtree, but he is actually controlling Richter. And what's this? A second Dracula's castle appears that is upside down. As Alucard, I teleport over and the entire castle is the same, but yet totally different. There's more powerful enemies, multiple new boss fights, and what feels like an entirely new game in many ways. I quickly came to the conclusion that the inverted castle in Symphony of the Night was one of the most amazing uses of game expansion at a time when technology and limitations held developers back from doing these sorts of things. They were able to use the same castle, flip it upside down, increase with different enemies, and really create a groundbreaking experience and expansion to a game using uh, very limited resources. The idea was so creative and groundbreaking that even in 2020, I'm still shocked and amazed that they were able to do this so successfully. I died many times in the Inverted Castle. It wasn't that the castle was so hard, it was more so that I was playing kind of recklessly, especially because the first castle was so easy. Once I began to take the game and the challenges a little bit more seriously, I was able to conquer most challenges effectively. So at this point in the inverted castle, you need to collect the body parts of Dracula by defeating bosses throughout the castle. This is very similar to Castlevania II Simon's Quest. In fact, this game has a lot of similarities to Simon's Quest. The open world, the backtracking, item collection, weapons and upgrades, Dracula's body parts. This game is heavily influenced by the Castlevania game that everyone loves to hate. Hmm, the irony. For those that don't know, I did once upon a time speedrun Castlevania 2, and at one point held the third best glitchless time in the world. You can check that video right up here or in the description down below. Overall, my experience with Symphony of the Night was amazing, and the expectations did not exceed the reality. It lived up to the hype. The final fight with Dracula was awesome, exploring both castles were challenging, yet fun and rewarding, and I can now see why Castlevania Symphony of the Night is regarded as one of the best games of all time. I'm also excited to tackle the second quest as Richter, and you can check me out on Twitch if you want to see that gameplay. Links are down below in the description. 
So what was your experience the first time you played Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Leave it down in the comment section and let me know. Also, what was your favorite part about the game? My favorite part by far was the boss battle when you face off against Trevor, Sypha, and Grant. Just throwbacks to Castlevania 3. My mind was so blown, I actually thought in my head, where's Alucard? Duh, I am Alucard. But that part for me was definitely my favorite. So if you like what you see here on the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell so you get updated whenever I post new content. As always, it's Jay Glee signing out. Thanks for checking in and continue to game strong.